my name is Brandy. This is Brandy's Books and today I just want to talk about some of the non-romance books that I have been reading over the last couple of months. And um, as we are waiting for my tablet to load, I want to talk about this book right here, Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. So I adore this book. I love this book. It is everything that I have heard people talk about and more. It's a wonderful book. I freaking love it. So uh, what this book is about is essentially um, in like this, this, this group of men, they have lived their, you know, their heyday. They've had their prime time, right? And now they're kind of, you know, more tired, you know, they no longer, you know, fight monsters and all this stuff and they are legends and it's all, you know, it's all good, right? So they've split off and um, they're all doing their own things. Well, uh, one day, one of our, uh, one of the bandmates comes to Mr. Clay Cooper and is like, hey, my daughter's in trouble. Will you help me bring the band back together so that we can save her? And the story just goes from there and it's about them just trying to, you know, bring the band back together and um, get to this, get to the daughter um, whose name is Rose, uh, where she is currently in like a castle town type situation and it is under siege. Um, and yeah, so the majority of the book is getting the band back together and the journey to the place, right? Um, I would say the last 100 pages or so is the actual, like there's actual like a lot of action like a lot of stuff happens sorry if y'all hear my fan it's really hot i've got just too much lights too many lights on um but overall it's a really good book i love journey stories um especially because when it become when it comes to like stories that have journeys in them it's usually at that time is when like character progression happens um and you know we learn backstories and things about band and all that it was really great it was really great I loved it. I believe I read it at five stars. Trigger Guide by ooh, Cameron Johnston. And I really liked the book, but I really kind of didn't at the same time. So this is about um, a man who purposely goes into exile. He exiles himself. Well, it, okay, so promises were made to him and he made promises and one of those promises was that he needed to essentially exile himself and um well one day he feels his friend die because they are connected in a certain way and he feels his friend die and because you know there was a promise that was made to him that was broken at that point he decides to break his promise and go figure out what happened to his friend why his friend was murdered um and it just goes from there so it was really good is a grim dark, I would say, um, or dark fantasy, whatever you want to call it. I think I gave this like four stars. I don't know. There's something bugging me as to why I didn't absolutely love the story. Because I loved the plot. The plot was really good. It, there were some twists and stuff. Um, the magic was good. The characters were good. The world was good. I don't understand why I didn't absolutely love this book. And I read this months and months ago, and I still don't know why. But there is a second book called God of Broken Things that I uh, that I own, so I'll probably give it a shot. But overall, so a really, really good book. I liked it. All right, I want to talk about a Thousand Deaths of Art R. Ben. So I got about three hundred something pages in and i dnf'd it so th and this is this the first book uh kingdom of grit book one so essentially and there's no rating because i dnf this book um essentially what happens is he is a con artist a gr not a grifter i wouldn't say grifter oh what's that show i'll i'll have to remember that show and put it on here but um and he you know he's asked to steal something and it just kind of goes from there and he has to like get a group of people together and yada 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 I didn't like it I didn't like the world I didn't like the characters I did not care for the magic system and the way that the magic system like how you got the magic per se I I feel like this was more steampunk ish kind of 
I don't know. I just, I wasn't one enjoying it at all. I didn't like the characters, didn't like the world. The plot was okay. Um, yeah, and that was it. So, no rating, but... Okay, the next book that I want to talk about is Sinless Sins by Josiah Bancroft. So, if Alice in Wonderland was centered on a male protagonist with adult themes, that's this with tower climbing. I did not like Sinlin's character per se. He wasn't a bad character. Don't get me wrong. He wasn't a bad character, but his motivation was kind of honestly weak. I didn't. Well, <laughs> okay. So his motivation is him and his wife go on or his like they're newlyweds, right? So they're going on their honeymoon and they get separated and it, this, the story follows him trying to find her. Like he's climbing the tower trying to find her and I didn't I don't feel I didn't feel connected to either one of the characters to care I did not care what happened to them I, I didn't care if he found her or not I didn't care if they were ever reunited blah 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 blah. right some of the shit that happened in this book I was like what the fuck who like were you on acid when you wrote this like you were tripping balls okay and then like I also got the huge 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 feeling of just unfairness just unfairness everywhere <laughs> um and I just didn't I don't care All right the next book that I want to talk about is the southern the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires by Grady Hendrix so this story is about a group of suburban moms who form a book club and you know at first they're like reading I don't know like literary fiction type shit and then it progresses to like murder mystery thriller type shit. And then someone new moves in to the neighborhood. And they're like, oh my god, is he a vampire? Stuff like that. And I don't know what the fuck that voice was. But so, and it just kind of goes from there. Um, so it's not a bad book. Especially towards the end. The ending I really liked. However... However, how could you be so fucking blind and dumb and ignorant as to what is going on in your own fucking household? Okay, the Patricia, I think her fucking name is, bitch, I wanted to jump in this book and beat the fucking shit out of her ass. She's fucking ignorant. She's fucking privileged. I just, how can you be so fucking dense? How can you be so fucking dense? I, again, I don't fucking understand it as a parent, as a how this is like like willful willful ignorance on her part Ch choosing you know what if she doesn't think about it then it's not real and i think that's why it, this isn't because i don't know this could have been a lot of things it, it deals with you know you know a, a bunch of fucking white women privileged white men women all of a sudden you know you know it doesn't bother them that well it, on some level it bothers some of them that these you know little black kids go up missing or you know they're killing themselves or you know other shit right um but it doesn't really they don't really want to talk about it because it doesn't really affect them in their personal lives you know what i mean but oh no as soon as something happens in their little white world their white you know wonder red world okay um so i mean i, I get it but just, just made me mad overall it really made me mad and just fucking sad like how can you and I get that the times I forgot the times when was this written I don't know it was like when it was like cool to be well, not cool but like it was like the norm to like the husband you know be at work, work all the time and the moms like stay at home and spend the husband's money and take care of their house and stuff like that um but yeah, I, this book overall just made me mad and sad. So, I don't know. I'm not keeping it, by the way. I'm not keeping it. The next book that I read um, is The Queen of Blood by Sarah Beth Durst. And in this world, it's like, it makes me think of like Tinkerbell and like little fairies and stuff. Um, but it's like little people, <laughs> um, shoot, Fern Gully type thing. Um where like the, but instead of everyone kind of getting along like the, the 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 wood creatures are trying to eat the little fairy people 
um and like there's in the it's like very matriarchal there's this one woman who has all this power to control these creatures um and as her power starts fading you know they you know they kind of break free and they start doing you know the teeny stuff and at that point there's like some kind of competition type bullshit to see to find the next queen and I didn't like the book at all it was fucking boring honestly I'm surprised I didn't DNF I don't know why I didn't DNF I really 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 wanted to like the book I really liked the plot um the characters were good all that um the fucking ending was a little bit gory but I didn't care I didn't care about it at all I don't I have the other two books and I, I don't want to read them uh so I'm not going to Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I will forever be freaking Margaret Rogerson stan because after an enchantment of raisin, ravens, I almost said raisins, oh my god, and this book, I love her writing, I love her characters, I love her worlds, I want to be a freaking Margaret Rogerson character, okay? Anyway, that being said, this is like my new like favorite author now. I will always forever buy her stuff and pre-order it and I love it so this book is about a young woman who um, is trying to become a librarian and in this world like these books there's like magical book magical books some are very dangerous some are like you know really funny some are like serious and very studious but the books are magical and it's freaking wonderful um, and then one night one night something happens and she gets accused of murder and this like follows her trying to clear her name and there's an adventure and there's a bowie. Well, these characters are like older than teens. So I think, right? I think so. Maybe 17? Shit, I don't know. I got like grown feelings, you know what I mean? Not grown grown, not like 29, but like very very early 20s like 2021 20, feeling from them i don't know um <clears throat> editing brandy will like insert shit if she feels like it um and oh my god there's a demon that i absolutely love like i am a hoe for some sexy ass demons some badass demons some you know demons who like you know for so long they were a certain way but after you know, again so such a long time you know like they they grow and they change and stuff like this and the ending made me cry and then it made me like sad cry and then it made me happy cry and i really really love this book i love this book so fucking much it's five stars i'm keeping it forever definitely gonna at some point reread it half the world by joe abercrombie this is the sequel to half a king which i read and I tapped that bitch up and I loved it. I loved that book so much. Yarby. So this follows Yarby, Father Yarby, um, sequel to that book. And um, he is not necessarily the main protagonist in this book, but he is very much a center character in this book. Um, we do have a new pr protagonist, protagonist who, um, shit, what's her fucking name? Thorn. Thorn and she is trying to you know be fucking strong and this is like Viking type shit and you know like the shield maidens were a thing right however like in this world it's like <sighs> women can be strong and fear fierce and like then they can be fighters however like unless like unless they're in times of war they're expected to like stay home and be like moms and take care of like homes and stuff like that um, but in, if like there's like a war or, you know, someone's in, invading them or whatever, then yeah, they're going to like pick up weapons and fight too. And I think to some extent, like they are given the option to learn how to fight, but is like to an extent, right? Once they get to a certain, like, you know, I would say like basic kind of self-defense, like you stab here and they will die type, type thing. Um, uh, anything after that is frowned upon and it's like almost severely like punished um you know they are taught to not want to do that anymore you know to only go so far anyway so this follows thorn as she is becoming her you know coming into her own badass and then little badassness um and i loved it i loved thorn i i would i didn't tab the book because i just didn't feel like it um and i it wasn't so i really i gave this 
four stars, five stars. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. However, it did not emotionally affect me as Half a King did. So that's why I didn't tab it up and all that. But I still really, really enjoyed this book. I'm loving this world. Um, half the world isn't, oh no, I lied. Half a war is next and I can't wait to read it. So if anyone has been, you know, reading any of my freaking tweets the last couple of months, I have really been in this weird mood to where I want magic in like a fantasy book I want a magical fantasy book not not a you know a book that has you know some where some select few can have this magic or the magic is dying out and like it's you know tatted as like a magical book but there's like hardly any fucking magic in it right I wanted magic like out my bone hole okay I wanted magic every fucking where like I wouldn't say super, 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 super easily accessible to everyone, but to the point to where everyone is given a shot to access it, if that makes sense. I don't know. Anyway, so, and then I stumbled upon Lit RPG, and I'm dumb. I am so dense because I read, God, I read so much, what is it? What was the fanfic? that I read when I was younger. Anyway, like I've known about Lit RPG for a while. And, <laughs> but I mean, but again, it's been a while since I've read it. Anyway, so long story fucking short, I started reading some Lit Fantasy and, um, or some Lit RPG. And am I crooked? I'm sorry, I'm crooked. I had a phone call. Anyway, so, um, who was it? Holly and Jess. I had heard talk about this book called Sufficiently Advanced Magic. And is it a, it is a lit RPG, um, tower climb type thing. So what happens is, um, this brother is going to take the test. Cause you have to like take the test to get like a kind of power type thing and then from there you can tower climb and get all these perks and all this other stuff and then like there's a mystery and some shit happens and blah blah blah, blah. He's trying to find his brother because his brother went into the tower and disappeared and usually that means they either they probably died so but he's like i don't feel like my brother died and it just goes from there it was really 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 good i love that book um and then the second book I also read on the shoulders of Titans. Really fucking loved it. The third book comes out in December, I believe. And I already pre-ordered that bitch. And I cannot wait to fucking read it. I loved, oh my god, it was so good. Um, and then I read um, Into the Labyrinth by John Beers. And so, it's like these kids, if you have like some kind of magic or whatever, you're sent to the school um and then from there you're like trained a little bit and then once you reach like a certain year you get the chance to be apprenticed um or to be picked as an apprentice to someone and um this book kind of follows this misfit bullied kid who like creates a home of his own in the li this library this magical library and um him and a couple of other kids whose magic isn't behaving the way magic's supposed to be in this world um you know they're picked to be an apprentice to this older dude and it kind of goes from there and like there's a labyrinth under the uh under the school and you know some stuff happens and some creatures and some you know fighting and da da da, da. it was a really good book i enjoyed it um it wasn't super super amazing like knocked down like amazing um but i still really liked it all right, and then I read, whew, so I love this book. This is like a 1,111 page book or something. It was an ebook. Um, but Iron Prince by uh, Bryce O'Connor and Luke Chimil Chimilco. I cannot pronounce your name. I'm sorry. But, okay, so this young boy is trying to be really powerful okay so he's trying to make a name for himself you know he he wants to be a really good fighter all this but because of how he was born there he has some um I would say hereditary mm, how do I explain this he's got some medical problems that and a lot he's had to have a lot of surgeries right 
and that kind of hinders him but then something happens during this test and he's given you know an amazing fucking opportunity and it's about him coming to his coming into his own and like very much a found family story um a very heart-wrenching story well, i wouldn't say heart-wrenching it was really it was really really good written good ugh, good written what brandy it was very it was written <laughs> It was written very well. I really enjoyed it. The characters were really good. Um, somewhat diverse. Uh, but they had really good, like, all of them had their own, like, personalities, you know. Um, I really liked the plot. Overall, it's a really, really good book. A good book. It recently came out, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to wait a fucking minute for the second book, which sucks because I really want to. I really want to read the second book now but it really made me think of um so the main character's name is radon radon ward and uh, my voice is going out and it really makes me think of raiden from mortal kombat and it's got like a little bit of like some tie-in type things it was really good i, I don't think like it didn't <laughs> the author didn't connect the two i just connected the two so that's just the me thing um, I like to draw parallels to the stuff that sometimes doesn't make any sense. I am a Patreon supporter to uh, Jashana. I'll leave her channel link down below and all that stuff here on YouTube. <clears throat> and one of her buddy reads was The Queen's Poisoner by Jeff Willer. So in this story, this young boy is being sent to live with the king as a political prisoner of sorts because his parents had followed along with this plot to basically kill have him, the king killed and now the king is like your youngest son will come live with me as my guest you know what i mean political prisoners is to kind of keep the parents um in check you know and there are some assassination type things happening and some plots happening and all this other stuff so i like the book but i didn't love the book honestly i have no desire to continue on with the series at all um, it's just, it wasn't really gripping me. The magic was okay. The characters were okay. Um, a lot of flip-flopping in some instances. I don't want to like ruin it for anybody, but me, me personally, I just didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought it was going to. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Um, like and subscribe if you are not already subscribed. If you want to see, you know, so you can see more content from me because YouTube is being fucking assholes and yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.